This video continues a Windows Active Directory series covering various server roles and features. Here, we will add a DACP role to an existing Active Directory Force domain running Windows Server 2025. The steps and procedures here apply to Windows Server 2022 and earlier. We will cover operating system preparation, add DHCP role and authorize an AD, add and configure DHCP scopes, differentiate between server and scope options and policies, discuss DHCP policies, filtering, configure failover, and administer from an administrative workstation. As we did with the two domain controllers, we must prepare the server operating system. Since we already covered setting IP addresses and joining a computer to the domain earlier, when setting up the second domain controller and the administrative workstation, we will not cover those topics here as the processes are the same. It is important, however, that the DACP server has a static IP address. At the Server Manager dashboard, click Add Roles and Features. Add the DACP server role and add the required features. At the DACP server screen, read the notes and continue with the installation. Once the installation is complete, close the Add Roles and Features wizard. Click the yellow caution symbol and click Complete DACP Configuration. The configuration wizard will create DACP administrators and user security groups and authorize the server. If logged in with an enterprise or domain admin credentials, click Commit. As Server Manager, click the Tools menu and select DACP. Click the server to expand. If authorized, the IPv4 and IPv6 icons will have a green check mark. Right click the server to unauthorize. Take note of the caution and click Yes. Right click the server again and select Refresh. Notice the icons now have a red down arrow. DHCP servers can also be authorized via PowerShell. Open an administrative terminal or PowerShell session. Type add dash DHCP server in DC to authorize a DHCP server. In the DHCP console, right click the server again and select Refresh. Notice the icons now have a green check mark. Now we need to make the DHCP server do DHCP things. Right click IPv4, select New Scope, and click Next. Provide a meaningful name and optional description for the scope. Enter the start and end IP addresses for the scope along with the subnet mask. For this example, we'll exclude addresses 110 through 120. An exclusion means that the DACP server will not provide a client with an IP address within this range. For this scope, we'll set the duration to 30 days. When we create another scope, we'll use a much shorter duration. Each scope can have its own set of configurable options. Leave the Yes radio box selected and click Next. Enter the router gateway IP address and click Add so that it appears in the bottom area. Note, if you enter the router gateway IP address and click Next without clicking Add, the router option will not be added. If things are configured correctly, the parent domain and DNS servers should automatically populate. Click Next to bypass the Win Server screen. For DACP to issue IP addresses, we need to activate the scope. The Completing the New Scope Wizard advises providing high availability. We need to configure failover, which we will do a little later. Boot up and log into a client computer on the same network or VLAN that the DACP server is servicing. The client computer does not need to be a domain join member. Open a terminal or PowerShell session or command prompt and type ipconvig forward slash all. Congratulations, 
we now have a working DACP server. But we're not done yet, as there's so much more to DACP. Open an administrative or elevated terminal or PowerShell session and type ipconfig forward slash release, followed by stop computer. Back at the DACP server or your administrative workstation, which you should use, open the scope and look at the address leases. Notice the IP address of the client you recently shut down is still there. This is a default behavior as it allows the DACP server to issue the same IP address to the same client whenever possible. Under address leases, we have reservations where we can reserve an IP for a system. This is very useful for nodes like servers, printers, VoIP devices, and client systems that require the same IP address but don't necessarily need to be physically statically set. Also, a reservation can issue an IP address outside the scope range. Right click reservation and select new reservation. Provide a meaningful name, which is typically the host name, and the IP address and enter the node's MAC address. For this example, I'm selecting an IP address 215 that is outside the scope. Boot up, log into the client computer, and check the IP address. Notice it is now set for the reservation. Make another reservation with an IP address within the exclusion range. Boot up, log into the client computer, and check the IP address. Well, guess what? You can still have DACP issue an IP address if there's an explicit reservation, even if the IP address is in the exclusion zone. Before moving on, I will create two additional scopes. DACP options are additional configuration settings past the clients to help automate the configuration of network parameters. The most typical three are 003 router, 006 DNS servers, 015 DNS domain name. Others you will come across are 066 boot server host name, 067 boot file name. Server options apply to all scopes associated with the server. Scope options only apply to the scope in which they are located and override server options, thus taking precedence. Create two new server options for DNS servers and DNS domain name. Right click Server Options, select Configure Options, and configure the respective option. In the scope, or scopes where the options are common, Delete the DNS servers and domain name options. Right click and select Refresh. Notice that we now have the server options listed as denoted by the little computer server icon. For the scope where there are different DNS servers and domain name, such as the scope for guests or mobile devices, set the scope options and notice that they take precedence. The same Server scope hierarchy also applies to DACP policies. DACP policies are rules that allow dynamic control and customization of IP addresses and other network configuration parameters distributed to clients based on specific attributes or criteria. In my guest scope, I'm going to set a new policy. Right-click Policies and select New Policy. Provide a meaningful name and optional description. Click Add, select MAC address from the drop down, enter the criteria, and click Add. For my example, I'm selecting a subrange consisting of the last 10 IP addresses. Clients that match this rule will get a different DNS domain name. Boot up. Log into the test guest client computer and check the IP address information. Like with options, scope policies override server policies. DACP filters are MAC filters that allow or deny which devices can receive IP addresses. 
which allows the filter to also act as a basic security mechanism. Here are some of the use cases for DACP filters. Expand filters, right-click Allow, and select Enable. With the Allow filter enabled, only devices listed in the Allow filter will be allowed to receive an IP address. Right-click Allow and select New Filter. Enter the MAC address of the device. The filter supports wildcards so that the OUI of known manufacturers can be whitelisted. The Deny filter explicitly denies a MAC address, while all others are implicitly allowed. You can also use PowerShell to add MAC addresses to the Allow or Deny filters. When used together, the Allow filter overrides the Deny filter. All of these filters are yours. Use them together. Use them in peace. Current versions of Windows Server since 2012 R2 support DACP failover without having to install and configure the failover clustering feature. The DACP role natively supports clustering of the role, even between different Windows Server versions. For this demonstration, SV1 primary is running Windows Server 2025, and SV2 secondary is running Windows Server 2022. Install the DACP role on the second server and authorize it after installation. Do not perform any configuration on the second server after authorization. Add the second server to Server Manager on the primary DACP server or an administrative workstation. At the DACP console, right click DACP and select Add Server and add the second DACP server. Right click the primary server, click Backup and select the location, click OK. Right click on IPv4 on the primary DACP server and select Configure Failover. You can select whether to fail over all scopes or a selection. Click Add Server, click the This Authorized DACP Server Radio button, and select the other server. For mode, we can select either Load Balance or Hot Standby. For this demonstration, I'm leaving the default Load Balance. Enter a string of characters for the shared secret. Click Close following a successful configuration. Ensure scopes, options, policies, and filters are present. Server options, however, are not replicated and have to be created manually on the second server. On either server, right-click IPv4, select Properties, click the Failover tab, and click Edit. Here, you can change the failover parameters or the failover type. As discussed in another video, we should administer our domain and servers from an administrative workstation. Since the administrative workstation already has all of the remote server administration tools installed, all we need to do is launch the DACP console. Right-click DACP and select Add Server. Select both servers and click OK. Expand both servers. On each server, expand IPv4 to see the scopes. We can also use Windows Admin Center with the DHCP extension to manage the scopes. Click Add. Under Servers, click Add and select Search Active Directory. Add both servers. Select either server and click DACP in the left pane. However, as of now, we can only manage the DACP scopes using Windows Admin Center. We cannot manage any of the server options, policies, or filters. And of course, you can fully manage DACP servers and clients using Windows PowerShell. Congratulations. We now have a fully functioning DACP server 
with failover serving multiple scopes. Continuing the series, our next steps are to set up other server roles and features, such as, and in no particular order, certificate services, DFS namespaces and replication, server for NFS, Hyper-V, print and document services, Windows deployment services as part of Configuration Manager, Windows Server Update Services, Failover Clustering, Network Load Balancing, and more. I hope you enjoyed this video, learned something new, and found it useful. If you have any feedback, corrections, or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, and pass it on to others. And I thank you for watching.